God sends out his spirit so that we may be people of God. And so as the people of God, we come and gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Welcome all of you to Mass as we celebrate this feast of Pentecost, the great gift of the Holy Spirit that begins the new era in the church, oftentimes referred to as the birthday of the church. And so you and I come as we continue the ministerial outreach of the church in our lives as we place ourselves in this prayer. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and loves with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as a fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. With you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and he stood in their midst and he said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. 
And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and he said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Once again, we welcome all of you to this Mass on the Feast of the Birthday of the Church, Pentecost. But we recall last week on the Feast of the Ascension of our Lord, where we celebrated the enthronement of Jesus as he goes back to the Father. But yet, even though he goes back to the Father, he promises to send the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, to continue his abiding presence in the body of Christ. So last week is something like a uh them for the audio visual yes time to say goodbye Jesus is saying it's time to say goodbye unless I say goodbye I can't go back and allow uh, the presence of God to keep building in your life and that's what Pentecost comes to be we know that uh, Luke in the first reading today uh, has what we traditionally would think of in as a Pentecost when the Holy Spirit, uh, like a strong driving wind, some different, you might want to say metaphors or similes, strong driving wind, like flames of fire upon their heads. Now, once again, in Luke's account, uh, Pentecost comes around probably the 40 days after Easter. But in John's account, the gift of Pentecost seems to be on the evening of Easter Sunday, when Jesus goes through the locked doors and then is greeted by them, even though they were so filled with awe, not knowing and not knowing what to believe or to expect. And so, once again, we have some um, invitation, because, uh, you know, in our own lives, we have to say goodbye and goodbye has different connotations, and there's different degrees of it. And yet, we want to pray for an openness to be receptive, that even though the Easter season is coming to a close and we say goodbye to it, or we empower it now with the gift of the Holy Spirit to speak the language of God, regardless of what our languages are. You heard that in the uh, first reading today. I always get a little um, tickled by it. Those names, most uh, readers and at church, uh, you know, hate to get stuck with this uh, first reading because of the hard names, you know, plus I find the names a little funny, the Elamites, you know, it kind of sounds like termites, a uh, first cousin. And then there was uh, Cappadocia. If I had a, if I started a, a, a coffee shop, I would call it Cappadocia because it sounds like a coffee shop to me. And let's not talk about Pamphylia and Phrygia. That sounds like diseases to me. But the fact is, is that, no, they were the names of groups, tribes, countries, areas of people. And once again, uh, there was such a shock because these Galilean um, men and disciples are able to be understood, even though everybody knew they didn't speak all those foreign languages that people were hearing. And it communicates the beautiful image that God's language is something which hits the human heart, not just in terms of uh, understanding the words or language, but because God's language is the gift of love, life, and breath. We hear that a beautiful imagery as well. When Jesus enters 
according to John's gospel today. We know uh, his, he's in a resurrected body, not resuscitated, but resurrected. He still carries his, his uh, imprints from the nails and his hands and feet. And yet there's something different about the resurrection because he can pass through the barrier of the doors where once again the disciples, even after they've said goodbye to Christ at the ascension, are still uh, locked up in fear. And then we hear Jesus reveal himself, give them his peace, and then he breathes on them. Now it's important for us to kind of remember uh, where did breath start? Where did breath start? And we go to the very beginning of the Bible, don't we? In terms of the story of creation. Once again, there's two different stories, but the story where, you know, God creates out of the clay of the ground, and he is Adam, first man. And then the beauty, beautiful poetry, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life his breath. So here is Jesus breathing on his disciples to empower the church to get out there and start breathing and passing the breath of God on to others. You and I know that we can't breathe. We can't go around saying, well, I'm irritated about having to breathe out, so I think I'm just going to breathe in. I mean, that's ridiculous, isn't it? No, it's breathing in, breathing out. We breathe in God's breath into our own lives as we put ourselves in that particular scripture. But we also are called to breathe God's breath out from our breath and with our breath so that the presence of God is continuing with the gift of God's creation and his church and his body and blood. Now, breath is uh, something that we've all been uh, really uh, slapped in the face about, hasn't it? in terms of these last several months, where we have to be humble before a virus that is micro, micro, whatever the word is, small. And we know that, what? How it affected people's breath is when those who were most uh, affected by it. And we know that it hit their lungs, and we know all of the news about the respirators that people had to be on, and, Sometimes that really helped, then sometimes maybe uh, they couldn't help and people breathe their final breath. But once again, even though we might breathe our final breath, God never stops breathing God's life into us. And so even as we pray for all those who are most impacted in terms of their very lives, we pray and ask them to pray for us since they have God's breath in them in the heavenly kingdom, even as they are grieved so diff so, uh, in such a difficult way in light of those families who have lost ones. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this too, and uh, I have found it a little callous, you know, uh, to hear people say, well, well people are going to die anyway, you know, so what's the, well, if it was us not being able to get our breath, or if it was somebody in our family not be able to get their breath, I'm pretty sure we would have a, a different kind of uh, attitude. So we want to pay attention to loving our neighbor as ourself when we stop and think about even our need for human breath and the difficulties and how we can, at times, need to know, even though we might resist being humbled, our breath can humble us. And those that attack, attack our breath can humble us. And so, as we continue this celebration, it's important that however we like to pray, however we like to be, uh, it's not just about what I get out of God or about what I get out of coming to church. It's about what we are giving back. We come to receive the body and blood of Christ, so we come to receive his word, we come to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit who, whose breath comes into us so that we can leave here and breathe out 
what we have received. In fact, every Mass ends. Go in peace, proclaiming the gospel by your lives. And I, I missed this class, but I'm pretty sure proclaiming the gospel, you need to be able to breathe to proclaim the gospel. So let's breathe God out and not just trying to breathe in for our own well-being. Having listened to the word of God, you and I profess faith. And so we say, I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and, and invisible. I believe, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God, God from God, God, light from light, from light true, God, true God from true God. God. Begotten, God not, not made consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. But by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. For the church, the body of Christ throughout the world, that we may be aware of our call to be a holy people, to share our gifts and talents to build up the body of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the spirit of understanding to inspire world leaders so that no matter what language they speak, they will have words of mercy and wisdom for our hurting world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are struggling with the effects of COVID-19, those who are sick, those who love them, for caregivers and all frontline medical personnel, may their illness be healed, strength renewed, and their fear surrender to you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the unemployed or furloughed, may they know God's blessing by the love the Christian community pours forth from the inspiration of the Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the warmth of the Spirit to fill hearts that have grown, grown cold, for the Holy Spirit to breathe new life into our brothers and sisters who are struggling with their faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those being called to vocations as ordained religious and lay leaders in the church, that they may hear the Spirit's call to evangelize with their lives as witnesses of the good news. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died and for the intentions of this Mass, may they who have passed from this life be glorified with Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own special intentions, we pause for a moment of silence. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus, who gives himself away as God the Father gives God's self away, as God the Holy Spirit gives the Spirit away. Help us to be receptive and help us to give ourselves away through Christ our Lord. Go. 
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, with the grace and glory of his name, for our good and for all of the church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. The same Spirit as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of one faith. Therefore, Overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. <clears throat> and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and given you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and given you thanks. He said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. <clears throat> may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed St. Joseph, the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and all the saints, 
on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the Holy Spirit of the Holy, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus said he would come back to take us with him where he is, that we may also may be. Jesus promises the gift of the Holy Spirit as we celebrate in this Pentecost. Yes, we sang goodbye with the ascension, but now, as Jesus calls us friends, we also, this diamond in the rough, huh? Hello. My friend, hello. We imagine here we still can say goodbye and hello, and that's part of the spiritual life. So we say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With the Spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the love of God. Behold the very breath of God, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those receptive to his breath. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare your unending love. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God. I hope you have a good week, everyone. Please be assured of our prayers for all our MBS family and friends. Mm -hmm.